All right, so you should be looking at your ions and the octet rule handout. So now that we have a good basis for what it means to be a valence electron and a core electron, it turns out that the valence electrons are going to be what helps us determine how an element is going to react. So before we can talk about the science, we're going to listen to a little story. And this story has to do with pigs. So let's say, let me scroll on back up here. Let's say that instead of your current job plan, whatever you plan on doing with your life. Let's say instead of that, you um, you do some research after graduating from U Prep, and you find out that the really really big field to get into these days is pig farming. So you decide to become a pig farmer, and you're going to be the best pig farmer there is. And because you are such a science-minded individual, one thing that you're going to do is do some research to find what makes a very effective pig farmer. So you find out, um, based on the current research in the field, that the best, most productive pig farms have eight pigs. Now, unfortunately, um, you weren't able to afford eight pigs. You got dressed up, you went to the bank to uh, get a loan, but they could only give you six. So let's go ahead and draw yourself a little pig pen with six pigs. Now you can write six pigs, or if you would like, you can draw, here we go, do do do, with a little snout, and it has ears, and a body, and a little curly tail, and it says oink. So here you are, you have six pigs. Now, it turns out that your neighbor also decided to get into pig farming. However, maybe they forgot to dress up when they went to go apply for their loan at the bank. They could only get two pigs for their pig farm. Now, remember that the most productive pig farms have eight. So here you are with six. Your neighbor has two. Now you have three choices. The first thing that you can do is you can buy some pigs. You can sell some pigs. Actually, that's it. You just have two choices. So in this case, what would be the simpler transaction? Would it be easier for you to buy your neighbor's two pigs, or would it be a simpler transaction to have your neighbor buy your six pigs? Well, it turns out, hopefully, that you said, if you have six pigs, you should buy those two pigs from your neighbor, you're basically going to consolidate, buy out your neighbor, and then you're going to end up with eight pigs total because you've gotten there too. So while your neighbor has since gone out of pig farming business, you now have a productive farm. Let's flip it a slightly different way. Let's say instead you go and you're only allowed three pigs. Again, maybe you forgot to, you know, brush your teeth or something when you went to the bank to apply for your loan. You were only given three pigs. Let's say, however, that your neighbor this time was a little more industrious and they were able to buy five. We're faced with a similar kind of problem. We have two choices. You can buy pigs or you can sell pigs. The question is, which one will be the simpler transaction? You can either buy your neighbor's five pigs, or you can sell your three pigs to your neighbor. Now, the simplest solution would be for you to sell your pigs. It's simpler to sell three pigs than buy five pigs. So that's what you're going to do. So you're going to go out of the pig business, but your neighbor will have eight pigs, and hence a productive pig farm. Okay, so the moral of the story is that eight is great. And if you can remember eight, the number eight, you are going to do very, very well in chemistry. Eight is great is also known as the octet rule. Octet meaning eight. So if you can remember that eight is great, also known as the octet rule, you will be in fine, fine form here. So the next question below is, how does the pig farm analogy relate to atoms? Well, it turns out that atoms behave in a very, very similar way to pigs and pig farming. So for example, let's say we have a sodium atom which, as we know from your awesome studies, you know that sodium has two electrons on its inner shell 
eight electrons on its second most shell. And on its very outer shell, it has one valence electron. So you can think of sodium as having one pig on its pig farm. So the question is, in order to get to that octet rule of eight is great, would it be simpler for sodium to get rid of its one electron, or would it be easier for sodium to gain seven electrons? Well, hopefully you figured out that it's easier for sodium to get rid of one electron. And when it does, look what happens. Here we have our sodium. It still has two electrons on its inner shell. On its outermost shell, it has eight, right? Because see, it has eight electrons over here. We got rid of this one. So now sodium is a happy little camper because it has eight valence electrons. So it is following the octet rule. And let's officially define that, sh shall we? The octet rule basically says that all atoms want eight valence electrons. And now remember, we're not saying that they want eight electrons total. No, no, we're saying they want eight valence electrons, eight electrons in their outermost shell. Okay, so instead of sodium, let's look at maybe a different example. Let's look at fluorine. Fluorine has two electrons on its innermost shell. And then it has on the outside, it has seven valence electrons. So with these seven valence electrons, you can think of fluorine as being a pig farm with seven pigs. Would it be easier for fluorine to take one electron or to give seven? And the answer, hopefully you figured that one out, the answer is it's easier to get one electron and become eight. So this is how the pig farm analogy relates to atoms. And below, if I could flash my big vocabulary sign for the day, the vocabulary that we need to know is right down here. Atoms that have gained electrons to satisfy the octet rule. So in the case of gaining electrons, we'd be looking at something like fluorine up here. Fluorine is an example of an element that has gained an electron to have eight in its outermost shell. We call these anions. A-N-I-O-N-S. Now, please do not be the person who looks at that word and goes, oh, it's an anion. No, this word does not rhyme with onion. It is anion. Anion. All right, so atoms that have gained electrons to satisfy the octet rule are called anions. And think about this for me. If I've gained a negatively charged electron, will that make me have a positive or a negative charge? It will make me have a negative charge. All right, let's look down at the second one here. Atoms that have lost electrons to satisfy the octet rule. If we scroll up here, that would be like our example with sodium. We said that it's easier for sodium to lose one valence electron. Atoms that have lost electrons to satisfy the octet rule are called cations. And cations, here, let's scroll back up. Do, do, do. If you lose something that's negatively charged, that's going to leave you with a positive charge. So cations have a positive charge. And before we end here, I even have a cutesy dootsy little picture to help you remember that cations have a positive charge. And this is a doodle, right? We love doodles. Your doodle will not be as awesome as mine, but you know, don't worry about it. So I want you to think about a cat, right? Because these are cat ions. So when you draw a picture of a cat, you can think of, instead of having little circles for eyes, you can think of a cat as just having little pluses. Now remember, these aren't X's. This cat is not dead. 
because that would be a very, very sad cat. But this is a cat ion, and you can just picture this in your brain, that cat with the little pluses for eyes. And that'll help you remember that cations have a positive charge. All right, short and sweet, you are all done, and we will continue on to the noble gas envy exercise in class.